Lab 14, naturally selecting sprites. The peppered moth, Biston betulera, occurs in light and dark melanic forms, both of which are shown in figure one. The normal original form is a light peppered color. A specimen of the dark type was captured first in 1848 near Manchester, England, just 11 years before the publication of On the Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin. In the years thereafter, in various parts of England, the relative frequency of the dark form was observed to increase until today. In some regions, only dark forms are found. Why the change? The answer is almost self-evident. From the photographs shown in figure one and in figure two, in figure one, we see the tree trunk of the sort found in rural England, far from industrial centers. Lichens covering the oak tree give it a variegated surface against which the lightly peppered moth is hard to see. The black form stands out prominently. By contrast, on trees covering in industrial areas, like in figure two, the lichens are killed and the trunk is blackened by soot. On such a tree, it is the black moth that is protectively colored, the light moth standing out like a sore thumb. Birds that prey on the moths have been observed and photographed catching moths, and it has been proved that they bring about differential mortality, favoring the survival of the light forms in unpolluted woods and the dark forms in industrially blackened woods. A similar genetic variation exists among the sprites, or Rutinis spritus, our fictional species for today's Darwinian simulation lab. Sprites present in three phenotypes. A creamy, solid white color, a solid dull orange color, and a solid muted green color. The sprites are not indigenous to Georgia, but were brought here accidentally by way of a cargo ship importing cheap, knockoff, unlicensed Atlanta Falcons fan gear. Following a police chase ending with an overturned semi-littering Georgia 400 with shoddy knockoff Dirty Bird swag, the sprites made their way into the forests of our part of North Georgia. While they consume a very low calorie herbivorous diet and do not appear to be overly destructive to vegetation, especially in the larval stage, they have become a new food source for local omnivorous and carnivorous wildlife species. It is not yet known whether all three sprite phenotypes will be equally successful at establishing populations in this new habitat and what impact they will have on the food chain. A group of biology, zoology, and ecology students from UGA, Georgia Tech, and Georgia State with a shared interest in this new invasive species combined efforts to study, locate, and catalog the population of larval sprites here in North Georgia very shortly after the sprites had been introduced to the new habitat. They did so by using their new patented Sprite Larva Uncovering Gizmo, or slug, so that they did not have to rely on their own biological senses, and so that they were positive to locate every sprite within each plot. Their numbers are exact. They noted that the three phenotypes occurred in relatively equal prevalence. Due to research conducted abroad, the team has also learned that sprites lack substantial mobility until they reach adulthood. Until they reach maturity, larval sprites will cover no more than a three square inch area from the exact location in which they hatched. Your task today is to model the behavior of the local predators who have come to treat the sprites as a new food source. You will eat as many sprites as you can by collecting them in a cup. You'll be given 10 minutes in which to eat a year's worth of sprites. After this model year is passed, we'll count how many sprites of each phenotype you and your classmates have eaten. Do you think you and your classmates will be able to eat the same number of sprites counted by the university team? Do you think you're likely to eat more of a certain phenotype and less of others? Hypothesis, write a possible outcome for today's sprite hunting. State why you hypothesize this outcome. Our general hypothesis today in class was that we will not locate as many sprites as the university team. Since we are using our biological senses, we will locate less of whichever phenotype is better camouflaged in their environment. Materials and methods for this lab include maps for 250 square meter area at 34.086577 north negative 84.1158785 west divided into five 50 meter square plots and a cup. You will have your cup copy of your lab and your enlarged designated plot map ready. When you are told you will begin by proceeding to the designated 50 square meter plot, which has been uh, selected for your lab team. 
you will search and collect as many sprites as you can during a 10 minute time period. As you find each sprite, you will place it in your cup and you will also note its phenotype by marking the associated symbol W, O, or G on your designated enlarged plot map near the location in which the sprite was found. One member of the team can uh, do all of this plotting and marking if that's preferred. When your 10 minutes are up, you're gonna to return to class and count your sprites. You're gonna complete data table three according to the plot you were assigned. You're gonna also be sure that your data table three and notations that you wrote on your map add up to the same numbers. We're gonna combine our individual team data with that of the class, and that way we will complete data table two. This shows the plot boundaries for our designated areas. We will not be using plot four. The following plots have been designated for the following teams. Please note, take care not to trample the sprites. The sprites are in plain sight, but can be easily missed. Take care not to trample our landscaping, be respectful. Leave the yard as you found it, minus some sprites. Be sure all gates are closed before you come back in the house. Wipe off your feet and remove your shoes before re-entering the house. Ready, set, go. What do they look like? I can't tell you, but you'll see them. Ask your team to help you show, show you what they've got. So you're going to want to put them in your cup, right. collect them. There's a couple more. Are we having luck? All right. <laughs> No, I'll see if you come down in a bit. Okay, the yellows are actually white. Hush, I know. I know, but you can't, you'll eat the sprites. You can't come yet. There you go. Mark them down where you found them, what you found. Where we found them? Mm -hmm. Mark them on your map where you found them, what color they were. Now take five minutes to add up your team totals. Ready, set, go. Data Table 1 shows the number of sprites located by the Joint University Team. Data Table 2 shows the number of sprites eaten by your class of predators. This data in graph format Conclusions. Do you accept or reject your hypothesis? Explain your answer. In general, classmates found that they accepted the hypothesis. How do the original and surviving sprite populations compare? It was noted that far fewer green sprites were located. 
than had previously been found. It was also noted that orange sprites fared better than white sprites and that white sprites suffered the greatest decrease in numbers. How did the colors of each type of sprite affect its population size over time? It was generally decided that the green sprites were best camouflaged, the orange sprites being fairly well camouflaged, especially considering that it was fall and there were many leaves on the ground similar in color to the orange sprites. The white sprites were least adapted to their environment. What colors seem to camouflage best in each plot? What colors seem to stand out the most? In general, green camouflage best in all plots, but green was definitely the most difficult to find when the plot consisted of mostly grass. What colors seem to camouflage the best overall? What colors seem to stand out the most? As we stated, green camouflaged best overall and white stood out the most. How would these results change if the colors or patterns of the habitat were to change? We discussed how the orange was fairly well camouflaged in the fall season. We also discussed how Bermuda grass here in Georgia goes dormant in the winter and turns a dull straw brown color. This might actually provide better camouflage for the white sprites and maybe less camouflage for the green sprites. What traits would help a predator be more fit in this model environment? We discussed that predators with good eyesight would be best suited to seeking out the sprites. This includes predators who can see a wide range of colors. Describe other adaptations besides color that could affect an individual's survival. We discussed how the shape of the sprites was indicative of other shapes in nature. And if they had been a more geometric shape, they may have stood out more. We also discussed how they were able to sort of wiggle down into the ground around them and look like sticks. We also discussed that some predators are seasonal. For example, some birds migrate. If the primary predator of the sprites was a migratory bird that is not here in the wintertime, white sprites might actually fare better due to their potential ability to blend in better with the dormant Bermuda grass. Hope you enjoyed this lab. Have a happy Thanksgiving.